So module seven, we're going to be talking about these ideas of momentum and impulse. And so these are not entirely new ideas, new concepts, because they relate to things that we've already discussed, we've already worked through. Um, and momentum deals directly with Newton's laws. And actually we can rewrite Newton's second law the where the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration we can rewrite that in terms of momentum so the question is what is momentum well momentum is denoted by the variable p and it's a vector and it's equal to the mass times the velocity of an object and so velocity is a vector which is why momentum is also a vector and so we have this idea of momentum in terms of how we use it in our everyday lives uh, much like with some of the other concepts in physics, like with acceleration, um, it doesn't always match up with how we talk about it in terms of physics. And so an example of this would be where we talk about um, something having a lot of mass. So let's say a dump truck moving, driving down the road. You know, we would say, man, that, that dump truck has a lot of momentum. And why do we think that it has a lot of momentum when we say that? Well, we relate it to the idea of mass. So this idea of inertia, where, yes, something that has a lot more mass has a lot more inertia. But in our everyday terms, that's what we're talking about when we say, oh, that has a lot of momentum. And that just isn't necessarily the case and could cause you to run into troubles if you're, if you're thinking about that. So actively think about, okay, what is momentum? And am I relying on my everyday thought process of momentum? So momentum, momentum is not the same as inertia. So inertia, the larger the mass, the more inertia it has. That's not the case for momentum. You know, they, we could have a dump truck in a car and we could have a scenario where the car has more momentum than the dump truck. So just kind of keep that in mind that those two concepts are, are different and that how we talk about momentum in our everyday language uh, does not always reflect what it means in physics though that is to say a dump truck that's traveling down the road does have a lot of momentum uh, i'm not trying to say it in in those terms it it gives you a rough estimate but there are cases where you could have a dump truck and even something smaller like um i don't know a person um where where there's a scenario where the dump truck doesn't have as much momentum as the person. So just kind of keep those things in mind as we're going through this. So momentum is just the how much motion a mass has in a sense because we have we have a mass that we typically are going to have constant and it's going to be moving at some velocity. And so that coupled together, that mass with that motion gives rise to this idea of momentum. So let's connect this to what we already know with Newton's second law. So Newton's second law, sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration of an object. Can we rewrite Newton's second law a little bit? Well, you know, with the idea of kinematics, what is acceleration? Acceleration is just equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Delta V over delta T. I'm gonna drop this sum and I'm just gonna write the net force since we are comfortable using that. 
And you know, let's let's massage this equation a little bit. We have change in velocity and we have mass up top. So we have those two things in the numerator. Is the mass typically changing for any kind of situation? Um, for the most part, not. It's not. You have something moving along, some object moving along. It usually isn't losing or gaining mass. So what we can do is, it's just a constant. So we can bring that in. So we have the net force is equal to the change in the mass times the velocity. Since the mass change in mass is just equal to the mass, we have the mass times the change in velocity still. So we haven't changed anything in this equation. We've just rewritten it in a new way. And so you might be picking up on something right now and saying, hmm, that looks familiar. The mass times the velocity we just talked about, that's equal to the momentum. So what we have now is we have the net force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. And how we're going to be dealing with it in, in this section is the net force over some amount of time is equal to the change in momentum. So what we're going to be dealing with in, in this module is we're going to be dealing with this idea of changes in momentum. And those changes, changes in momentum, and those changes in momentum are caused by a force over a certain time interval. So changes in momentum are caused by forces. So we're again, in, in this uh, module, we're going to be dealing with forces again, much like we did with dealing with Newton's laws because they're connected. And just to remain consistent, because it is going to be an important point, forces are vectors, velocity is a vector, momentum is again a vector, force is a vector, force is a vector, and momentum is a vector. What does that mean? Direction matters. So again, you're going to have to define your coordinate system. You're going to have to choose a direction for your momentum and for your forces. And it's actually going to matter because we're dealing with changes in momentum. So that means if you get the sign wrong for one of the momentums, then everything else is going to be incorrect. So you're going to have to keep track of signs and it's actually going to play an important part uh, in this module. And finally, this term right here, the force over a certain time interval, we're going to call that the impulse. So an impulse is going to be a force applied over a certain time interval. And so a very large impulse could be the result of a very large force, or it could be the result of a very short time interval. So it's going to have that relationship. Impulse, and this is going to be something that is typically used. J is going to represent impulse. But there's a couple problems in the expert TA homework where I is used for impulse. but not as common. So I would stick with using J as impulse, but just recognize that sometimes it's referred to as I, um, but that's not the common usage of it. And so let's put this to the test. So the idea is, again, physics describes why things happen the way they do around us or why, why we assume things or we know things to be the right way why is that from a physics standpoint? 
And a good example of this is say you're, you're up on a tree, or in this case, the person's jumping off this rock ledge. Um, what do you know to do when you, just before you're hitting the ground? And so there's a case where you don't bend your legs. So you try and like stick it uh, with straight legs. Uh, what do you expect to happen in that case? And then case two, where as you're jumping and you're just hitting the ground, you start to bend your legs and you go into this crouching position. Which is better and why? And so I'm going to assume that most of us have uh, the intuition to bend our legs as we hit the ground. So this would be no damage. This would be send me to hospital quickly. And why is this the case? So again, we have this idea of an impulse, which is represented by J or I, um, but typically J. And the impulse is the force applied over a certain time interval. And what does that do? That causes a change in momentum. So we have some velocity as we're just before we're hitting the ground. And then as we hit the ground, uh, we go to stationary. So we have some V and then we're going to nothing. We're stopping. And so since we have this change in momentum, we must have an impulse to cause this change in momentum. And so what is the difference between these two cases? Why is it that in one case we go to the hospital and in the other case we uh, go walk around like nothing happened? Well, we know that the change in the momentum is the same. And so that is equal to the impulse. So that's the same. So what must be different? Well, the net force or the time interval must be different. Because we they have the same impulse. So one of these two quantities must be different. And so when you bend your legs, what you're doing is you're decreasing the force that is being exerted on your legs. So what you're doing is you're lowering your center of mass which decreases the force. And that force is the ground that's applying the force up onto your legs. And so by lowering your center of mass, you're decreasing that force that's being applied upwards. And so when you don't bend your legs, you have a much larger force that's acting on, on your legs. And so that's why your bone ends up breaking. Now there's this other scenario where you bend and roll. Wow, can't spell there, R-O-L-L. -L. So when you bend and roll, what you're doing is you're decreasing the force because you are lowering your center of mass. But what you're also doing is you're increasing the time that the force is acting on your body. So what that does is that ends up lowering the force even more. Because again, they have the same impulse. All of these scenarios have the same impulse. It's just the relationship of the force and the time that a force acts is different for each of those cases. And so in the end, it's the force that we're worried about on our legs. And it's the time frame that makes a difference.